Welcome, one and all, to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. We're live. I don't really know how, because we generally do these COVID shows with, like, uh, bailing wire and duct tape to begin with. And I just want to give a shout-out to my writers, my whole staff, the crew, everybody for making this. I don't know how. Chris, how is this? How is it, is it actually happening, or are you humoring me? It's, it's actually happening. It is night one of the Democratic National Convention, and they're telling me it's live. He's got the little bug there in the corner. And I, I tell you what, here's how we can prove it, okay? We can prove that it's actually 1149 while I'm saying this. If you just look at a clock in the room where you're in right now, there it is. It's a huge night. The size of the hugeness, large. Evie's here. Yay. Thank you, my darling, for being here. I owe you one. I owe you more than one, but I owe you one for this. Folks, for four years, we've looked on in horror as Donald Trump tore down every norm in American life from the Constitution to English syntax to the definition of food pyramid. Well, tonight, tonight, the Democrats begin what Joe Biden has called a battle for the soul of this nation, but that we're calling Democrats assemble. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. I am Casey. So beautiful. So great. Speaking of John Kasich, the former Republican governor of Ohio, was one of the speakers tonight. He was there to underline the theme of this convention uniting America. Slightly more inspiring than the Republican convention theme, gas protesters and throw mailboxes into the sea. The Democrats open the night with a celebrity cameo. Good evening, I'm Eva Longoria Baston. Wow. Trump desperately needs the suburban housewives, but Biden beat him to the desperate housewives. Though, next week, I think the RNC will have at least one desperate housewife. Then the convention was kicked off in an earnest with a montage of Americans of every stripe reciting these famous words. We the people. We the people. We the people. Nosotros. We the people. We the people. We the people of the United States. You know how when you repeat something over and over again, it starts to lose all meaning? This is the exact opposite of that. Because the theme of the night was we the people. And regular people were featured all evening. I was deeply moved. Not just because some of my best friends are people. It's because this feels like the real beginning of the election, a chance for the American people to do the work that our elected officials failed to do for the past four years, and that's hold Donald Trump accountable. It's a little, a little bit like we're in the middle of a road trip, and we finally realize dad's lost and we have to take the wheel, and also send dad to jail for stealing the car. <laughs> the evening was filled with beautiful moments, like to perform the national anthem, they had singers from each state. It was the most beautiful and moving gap ad ever. The Democrats tried to keep it casual. We're going to check in with folks around the country and ask, how are you doing? Honestly, I'm feeling a little weird. I'm doing a live TV show from a fake <laughs> office while making jokes while a republic stands by. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> you weren't talking to me. I'm sorry. Now, one of the Americans they checked in with was a woman named Michelle a school nurse from El Paso, Texas, who rocked a Cookie Monster late night munchies scrub top. Very nice, but it could have been awkward. Biden was planning to accept the nomination in the exact same outfit. <laughs> I have to say, watching the first night of the convention was very inspiring. It gave me hope because it brought me back to where I was four years ago, in a room with other people. We heard from Congressman Jim Clyburn Good evening. I'm Congressman Jim Clyburn, here in historic... Good evening. I'm Congressman Jim Clyburn. 
What an embarrassing mistake. What an embarrassing mistake. The Democrats attacked Donald Trump and the Republican administration with the most vicious, cheap shot imaginable, accurately describing his presidency. There were scenes of economic disaster, protests in the streets, a heartbreaking memoriam reel of everyone who has died of the coronavirus. Then this message from an average American who spoke about how her father, a Trump supporter, passed away from coronavirus. His only pre-existing condition was trusting Donald Trump, and for that, he paid with his life. How are the Republicans ever going to answer that stark reality in their convention? I need you to go out there and dance your heart out, my pillow guy. <laughs> it was a night that featured Americans of every kind. We even got a performance from, I think, a forest witch. <laughs> Very powerful. Reminds me, I need to get my dream catcher back from Coyote. Now, at one point, they cut away for some quick reaction shots from the audience. Then they stayed on these two women for, and I'm rounding down here, about a hundred years. All the awkwardness of the kiss cam with none of the fun of a baseball game. And then Democrats introduced some folks you wouldn't necessarily expect to see at a Democratic convention non-Democrats, and not just Bernie Sanders. We heard from a slate of Republicans who are supporting Joe Biden. I'm Governor Christine Todd Whitman. What am I doing here? Last thing I remember, I was opening a half-gallon bottle of Goldschlager. Where are my pants? <laughs> I'm sure she's fine. Republican John Kasich opened with a visual metaphor for, it was subtle, see if you can spot it. America's at a crossroads. Oh, I know that place. That's where I made the deal with that fiery red guy. Kasich spoke of his long history with Joe Biden. I've known Joe Biden for 30 years. And I will rely on that relationship when I ask him to pick me up from this field I've been abandoned in. Joe cares. Joe wants Johnny K to come home. Then it was time to talk about the hottest, sexiest issue of 2020, the post office. To kick it off, the party turned to a rising Latina superstar in Congress. No, not AOC. Nevada Senator Catherine Cortez Masto. This year, more Americans than ever before are going to vote from rooms just like this. Unless you live in New York, then your room will be half the size and your sink will be inside your stove for some reason. <laughs> they had a montage of the other Democratic presidential nominees voicing their strong support of Joe Biden. I assume Marianne Williamson wasn't included because she was busy teaching a forest gnome how to use a crystal to talk to a wish. <laughs> then, there was even a special section on Biden's favorite mode of transportation. He knows what it's like to take the train to work. Smart ploy, tug at our heartstrings by making us nostalgic for the bygone pastime of traveling anywhere. And Joe Biden's daughter explained her dad's connection with everyday Americans. He would treat the conductor the same as he would the president of the United States. Oh, no. He's going to kick that conductor's ass in November. <laughs> then it was time for the two big primetime speakers. The first was Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, seen here demanding more raisins in his raisin brand. Constitutionally, I have the right to two scoops. <laughs> Bernie may not be the candidate. But he has gotten the party to embrace his Medicare for All plan, leading one former colleague to say he may feel a little bit like Moses. Look, thank you for the compliment, but I knew Moses. I'm nothing like the guy. The top 10% of his commandments only applied to the top 1% of the tribe of Zebulun. Now, where is the milk and honey for my damn raisin bran? Bernie addressed America from our national strategic stockpile of firewood, and he addressed the serious issues facing Americans today. Millions of working families are wondering how they will feed their kids. And I have one question. Could you feed them logs? Because I have a ton of logs. High in fiber. It's like Metamucil on a stick. Then... The production cut to everyday Americans' reaction to Bernie's speech, only they didn't seem to know they were on camera until it was too late.
But the big headliner, of course, was former First Lady Michelle Obama. There's no actual audience in here. That just happens whenever I say the name Michelle Obama. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And she began with a stirring message. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone! Everyone! That means she said hi to me. Now, somebody must have gone pretty low somewhere because just seeing her makes me feel high. Speaking of which, she called back to her famous 2016 catchphrase. A lot of people have asked me, when others are going so low, does going high still really work? My answer, going high is the only thing that works. A solid policy for both America and Dave Matthews concerts. <laughs> then the tone got real. If you think things cannot possibly get worse, trust me, they can and they will if we don't make a change in this election. That was a short walk from hope and change to duck at cover. Then she made the strongest possible endorsement. I know Joe. Good enough for me! Release the balloons! He knows Michelle Obama! Oh, I'm sorry, there's more. Go ahead. I know Joe. He is a profoundly decent man guided by faith. He was a terrific vice president. He knows what it takes to rescue an economy, beat back a pandemic, and lead our country. And he listens. As opposed to Trump, who knows how to beat back an economy, ignore a pandemic, divide our country, and he glistens. <laughs> the former first lady continued listing Joe's qualifications. He will tell the truth and trust science. Wow. Four years of Trump has really lowered the bar for president. I support Joe Biden. He believes the earth orbits the sun and he won't stab you. <laughs> the former first lady ended on a powerful note. We have got to do everything we can to elect my friend Joe Biden as the next president of the United States. Thank you all. God bless. I'll be honest with you. My job is to have a joke for every time somebody says anything in public. And after watching Michelle Obama's speech, I have never been more happy to fail at my job. And we've got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Ambassador Susan Rice. But when we return, I take you on a virtual tour of Milwaukee. Stick around, everybody.